Hello students, let us see this problem. What this problem is saying that there is a ring and that ring is a light ring, right? So it is a massless ring of course. And on this ring there is, there are two beads. One bead, bead A is fixed, right? And bead B is free to move on this ring without any friction. And initially you have to determine the acceleration of these two beads when there is no motion. That means the velocity is zero and that bead B is just released, right? So it is starting to move. And finally that there is some amount of friction between the bead B and the ring, right? You have to, you know, discard that friction for the calculation of the first part for the calculation of accelerations. But eventually the system will cease to move and the system will come to static equilibrium. And at this particular instant, you have to determine the total angle by which that system has rotated, right? So let's first begin with the first part, right? So this first part, what is here in the first part, uh, that you have to, you know, apply the dynamic conditions. That means uh, you have to draw the free boy diagrams. So the free boy diagram of this bead B is here. If you just look at here, the one force that is mg acting on this bead B and one force that is applied by this ring towards the right. And this is the normal reaction force. There is no friction, so there is no force along the tangential direction, only the normal direction in the horizontal direction, normal force. We have taken the x to be rightward and y in the vertically y di direction. So acceleration along x will be n by m and acceleration along y will be mg by m that comes out to be g, right? Now, we are, if we take the, uh, if we draw the free boy diagram of the rest of the system, that means this ring and this uh, bead A, because all of this system can be treated as a single rigid body, right? So on this rigid body, one force Mg that is acting on this bead and one force normal reaction because of the action reaction pair. And if we take, and there must be another force also that we have discarded, although it will not matter if we just take another force that is acting on this uh, point of you know suspension the reaction force r if we take the torque about this point o so of course this uh, torque of this reaction force r will become zero that is why it is irrelevant force so net torque about point o will be equal to moment of inertia about o into alpha because this uh, the actual axis of rotation is passing through the o so the normal reaction, uh, the torque will be mg minus m n times r into, so moment of inertia will be equal to 2mr square y because we are only treating this point mass contributing for moment of inertia, the ring is massless, right? So its distance here will be equal to this much root 2r, right? This distance is r, this distance is r, so this will become root 2r. So i alpha, from here we can get the value of r alpha as d by 2 minus n by 2m. Now. If we take this point here that was actually touching that this point here on the bead on the ring that was touching this bead and this point is integral part of this rigid body. So it will also be moving along this direction and its acceleration will be along this direction. Why can I say that its acceleration will be along this direction? Because this point essentially is moving in a circular fashion of radius how much root 2r radius to root 2r. And since its velocity is zero, it will not have any centripetal acceleration, only the tangential acceleration. Hence, its direction is perpendicular to this radial radius vector, right? So along this direction, distance root 2 r into alpha, root 2 r alpha. And if, if we take the component of the acceleration of this point here, this will get, this will be towards the horizontal direction, uh, root 2 r alpha into cos 45, that comes out to be r alpha. Now we can compare the acceleration or the x component of the acceleration of this point with this bead. Why we can say that? Because at this instant the velocity is zero and along the common normal if these two body are uh, in contact and if they have to remain in contact along the common normal their acceleration should be same. So acceleration along the x direction is n by m and that is equal to r alpha. By l, r alpha. So we get the second relation here n by m equal to r alpha right and if we use equation number one and equation number two we'll get the r alpha as g by 
3. So, of course, the acceleration of A will be just like uh, we did for this point here. The acceleration of point A will be equal to root 2 r alpha along this direction since it is in the pure rotational motion and it is only having the tangential acceleration. So, acceleration of A will be root 2 g by 3 and similarly acceleration of B will have two components. The x component will be n by m that comes out to be r alpha that comes out to be g, with g by 3 and y component is g. So, it is resultant of g and g by 3 that are at 90 degree angles so of course, this will result into root 10 g by 3. Now, for the second part right. So, let us first guess uh, the if we start guessing the position of uh, bead B that is very easy to do bead B cannot remain at in anywhere other than this point that is the lower most position why if this bead B was here there would be some component of mg along this tangent. So, of course, this uh, will push the bead downwards. So, ultimately if it, if it uh, has to remain at rest, it can only remain at rest in the lower most on the lower most position right. So, now if we just randomly take the point A to be here, we have just treated this point as random point here. So, bead B A is at this position. Now, how can we locate this uh, position of point of suspension? Just you know uh, join A to the center and initially what was given here, initially if you check, just check here that the point of suspension to center joining line was vertical and A to center joining line was vertical. So, there is 90 degree angle between these two. So, of course, that will remain in the final situation also that will remain in the final situation also because this A is fixed right. So, since A is fixed here we can say this angle if we just make 90 degree angle along this line here we will get to the position where the point of suspension is right. On this point of suspension there will be some reaction force let us say this reaction force is R in the vertically upward direction and one force mg will be acting from A that is mg here and another force will be acting here mg right. So, if we take the torque about point O that must be 0 and that means the line of the forces of line of the forces right perpendicular distance of these two forces one is this force must be equal to this length right these two lengths must be equal. How can we use that? Let us say this uh, this this length this part here has moved angle theta and that is what we have to determine the angle rotated by the system right. This line initially was the vertical line, line joining the point of suspension and the center initially was vertical now it is at angle theta with the vertical that angle theta we have to determine. So, this angle is theta of course, this angle will be theta. So, this angle here will be 90 minus theta and now if I drop a perpendicular from this point, this length is essentially equal to this length here and this length will be equal to radius times sin theta and this length, this length here will be equal to this length and this will be equal to this length right. So, if we take this whole length here that must be equal to 2 times this pink length right, right? that is equal to 2 uh, that is equal to r sin theta. So, this whole length will be in this triangle if you see th that. So, hypotenuse is r and this height is equal to this much. This whole length will be equal to 2 times of r sin theta and this whole length will be equal to r sin 90 minus theta. So, r sin 90 minus theta that comes out to be r cos theta will be equal to 2 times r sin theta from here we get the tan theta as 1 by 2. So, of course, theta equal to tan inverse 1 by 2 this is our result.